Welcome back to Open Your Reality. This video is about the amazing story of the 18th century mystic and adventurer, the Count of Saint Germain. Since starting this channel, I knew I'd eventually make a video on the Count. So what better time than now? I first learned of Saint Germain's incredible life story 20 years ago. Wanting to know more, I bought a couple of rare books on his life. I quickly devoured them and ever since, I've looked up to the Count as an example of human potential. Chances are though, you've never heard of the Count of Saint Germain. Let me tell you, in the 18th century, he was quite the celebrity in Europe. He was known as the Wonder Man of Europe for his uncanny abilities. Some even believe he was an immortal, ascended master. Voltaire, the famed philosopher, describes Saint Germain as the man who knows everything and never dies. The story I'm about to relay may seem improbable, but for those who have learned the secret of alchemy and transmutation, all things are within reach, as it was for Saint Germain. I think that's why we're all so fascinated with superheroes. The ascended masters of history are the real life superheroes of our world. They're the yogis, adepts, and little known people that have learned to manipulate the rule set of our holographic world. By doing so, these advanced beings can traverse time and space and live for unusually long periods of time. They can also manifest objects out of thin air, know things beyond their five senses, and leave their body at will. The Count of Saint Germain was especially unusual for an adept, for he decided to mingle with the most wealthy and famous people of his era, which for the most part was European royalty. He therefore was the guest of many kings and queens, indulged himself in important matters of government, and made himself part of the aristocracy. After arriving on the scene, it didn't take long for Saint Germain to gain fame and favor with everyone he met as a result of his amazing abilities, tremendous charm, and extensive knowledge. While much of his life was documented when alive, the Count's origins and death remain a mystery. Some claim he was born in 1710 in Transylvania. Others think he was a Spanish Jew, while some believed him to be born in the 1600s or even a thousand years earlier. Despite his true origin, nothing was known about the Count until he showed up in London in 1743. Some records indicate that it was even earlier than that. Once he became known, Saint Germain quickly impressed everyone he came across with his abilities. The Count could speak practically every European language and do so in a native accent to that language. He could also play the harpsichord, piano, and violin at a virtuoso level, performing in front of royalty and composing a number of sonatas that are still housed in the British Museum. But his talents didn't stop there. The Count could also paint beautifully, he was a marvelous conversationalist, and a master chemist. In fact, he claimed to be able to remove flaws from diamonds and transmute metals, such as turning base metal into gold. Some speculate this is how he attained his wealth. You see, the Count was often adorned in diamonds, and was rich from the start. Yet nobody ever knew the origin of his wealth. In addition to all this, the Count had a vast knowledge of history and world events. It was said that he talked about history as if he was actually there. Because he did, some of the people around him were entirely convinced he was at these historical events. If that was true, it means the Count was either immortal, could reincarnate into different bodies while retaining his memory, or was some kind of time traveler. We'll never really know for certain, but my guess is that he had learned to preserve his body through the ancient knowledge he accumulated. This perhaps allowed him to live an exceptionally long life. You can imagine how such a versatile man would be held in awe, even by the kings and queens of the age. But besides all that, the Count is also known for never aging. 
That is why Voltaire said he never dies. As you can see, there's a lot of speculation surrounding the life of Saint Germain. He seems to have come out of nowhere. Even during his life in Europe, he disappeared for years at a stretch. His death is also a mystery, and rightfully so. The records indicate he supposedly died in 1784, but some people claim to have seen him many years later. And the odd thing is that throughout his entire presence in Europe, which is said to have been about 122 years, he always retained the same youthful appearance of a man around the age of 40. This is an ideal age for a man of his social standing, old enough to be respected and revered, but young enough to do anything physically. One of my favorite stories of the Count was relayed by a very old Countess. She had known Saint Germain when she was only a young woman. The Countess had met our Wonder Man in Venice at that time, where he appeared to be a man in his early 40s. When the Countess was a very old lady, she saw Saint Germain again, as he made one of his surprise appearances. According to the Countess, the Count hadn't aged a single day in 50 years. The following is an excerpt from one of my books. The old Countess watched Saint Germain with the greatest of surprise, and finally, unable to control her excitement, approached the Count. She asked him if his father was in Venice 50 years earlier. The Count replied thus, No, madam, it is very much longer since I lost my father, but I was living in Venice at the end of the last and beginning of this century. I had the honor to pay you court then, and you were kind enough to admire my composing, which we used to sing together. The Countess retorted, Forgive me, but that is impossible. The Count of Saint Germain I knew in those days was at most forty-five years old, and you at the outside are that age at present. Madam, replied the Count, smiling, I am very old. But then you must be nearly one hundred years old, said the Countess. That is not impossible, answered Saint Germain, as he proceeded to recall detailed memories of their time in Venice a half century earlier. This is one of the many fabled stories that aggrandize the legend of Saint Germain. How did he acquire these powers and talents? We may never know, but his ability to halt the aging process is truly remarkable. His legend was further enhanced when he was seen by people after his recorded death in 1784. This includes the years 1798 in a revolutionary prison and the years 1815 and 1821 by another countess he knew. In later years, the mysterious life of Saint Germain was taken up by the Theosophical Society and Madame Blavatsky, who held him in the highest regard on par with the greatest masters of the ages. Through the last two centuries, people around the world have either claimed to see Saint Germain or be Saint Germain. Besides the Count's tremendous knowledge and skills, what struck me most about his life was his ability to never age. Time and again, people who saw him throughout the 18th century claimed he never aged a single day. Even his greatest detractor had to admit that Saint Germain never aged while the years had not been so kind to himself. Even if Saint Germain was not immortal, his ability to preserve his youthfulness for over 100 years is more impressive than any age-defying feat in recorded human history. I've read about Chinese Taoist masters who lived for 200 plus years, but none of them were able to retain their youthful look into older age like Saint Germain. Perhaps the Count had discovered an elixir to extend his life. He was, after all, a master chemist and alchemist. This elixir of life could be responsible for his ever-present youthful appearance. What's even more odd is that from the accounts of people who knew Saint Germain, they never saw him eat except to sip tea. Maybe he had mastered the art of breatharianism, where one can live indefinitely without food. The Count was very strict about not eating, although some accounts claim he ate a porridge or oatmeal on occasion. 
and only by himself. The subject of breatharianism, also known as Anidia, absolutely fascinates me. I've studied the subject in some detail and have read about people in history who can live without food or liquid. Let me know in the comments section if you want to see me make a video on this subject. Anyway, whatever the Count did to prolong his life, he probably learned it in India or the Far East. In one of his absences from the European scene, he was said to have journeyed to China and Japan. He also spent time in Egypt, no doubt learning the esoteric secrets of the ancient masters. There is so much speculation about Saint Germain, his abilities and his travels that I could go on and on. I'm leaving out a lot of information about his life, however, you can learn a lot more about him on the internet. But suffice to say, he was definitely one of the most celebrated mystics and adventurers of modern times. He was a confidant of two kings of France, an immensely rich and sought after social figure, and the subject of a thousand rumors. Some of the secret societies of the era, such as the Freemasons, Rosicrucians, and the Knights Templar, recognized Saint Germain as an adept who knew the knowledge of ancient wisdom. The Count is also said to have his hand in a number of other secret societies. Some even claim he influenced world events, such as the signing of the Declaration of Independence. There are many more accounts of Saint Germain's adventures, I can tell you, but there is one more I wish to share with you here. I found a passage in my research on Saint Germain that I was unaware. It said there was a great brotherhood in Tibet called the Kilan. I presume this was a group of high-level spiritual adepts. They claim that during the early part of the 20th century, an Englishman arrived. He was alone and could speak Tibetan fluently, plus almost every other language. He also knew every art and science. This Englishman took residence with the Kilan for several years, after which he was proclaimed a master of their secret tradition. This story is still known by the Tibetans. The Englishman's real name and origin are a secret. But might not this be the Count of Saint Germain himself? We'll never know for sure, but it certainly does sound like him. Perhaps no man in history inspired so many stories of his life. Questions abound, of course. Was the Count just an ordinary man who was supremely talented? If so, Maybe he was born in 1710 and died in 1784. But then how was it that his appearance never changed and he was seen after 1784 by people who knew him? And was Saint Germain really an ascended master who was alive long before making his entrance into European society? If so, could he still be alive today? If Saint Germain is alive now, Perhaps he makes himself unknown to us, keeping residence in a remote ashram somewhere in India or Asia. Whatever the case may be, the story of Saint Germain has captured the imagination of men and women since he disappeared from European society in the late 1700s. Even if he isn't an ascended master, his amazing talents, unaccounted for wealth, and prodigious intellect Make him a man who many men aspire to be like. For certain, if I had to pick one person in history to be like, it would be the Count. He was as fascinating as he was mysterious. Well, that brings us to the end, my friends. If you liked the video, would you please be so kind to subscribe and tap the like button? I most humbly thank you for your support, and I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. You can view a couple of my other fine video creations right here. Cheers.